The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 29th, the last trading session of 2023. And it is also Fantastic Friday. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us that's right when you and i make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us now today you and i we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets we'll go figure out what those bulls and bears what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and i at just past 11 o'clock in the morning i want you to know i am absolutely grateful for your presence here and even more important than that, and that's this, during the next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we got your back. You just send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic friday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show we got a sea of red out there mostly all the u.s indices actually that we track are trading the downside dow's up 27 points less than one tenth percent less than three tenths percent for the s p or 13 points half percent for the nasdaq 188 points russell's down 22 a little over one percent semis off about one percent or 39 points trendy's off 105 six tenths percent gold's off nine bucks silver's down 24 pennies natural gas off three cents 30 treasury down five six ticks Printed out at 124.30. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside, you've got Eli Lilly up four bucks and change. NetEase is up four and change as well. Alarm.com is up three. United Health is up three. Humana is up three. To the downside is Coinbase off 13. Restoration Hardware down eight and change. Super Micro eight and change. Netflix is off six. Albi Morrow is off about six as well. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. You know, the first question out of the gate right now is from uh, John inside the Tiger's Den. And his question is, is the NQ getting ready for a multi-day pullback? So let's answer that question. Then we'll go further into the equity future contracts. But let's go ahead and tackle that one first. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch panels. We're going to go to the white background screens out there. They're going to assist us in trying to answer that question. So we take a look at these white panel screens. The first one that you and I are going to look at is going to be the consecutive moves higher and consecutive moves lower. Uh, here, the red digits tell us about consecutive closes. That means a close below a prior close. The black digits, a close above the prior high close out there. Now, we can see since the bottom that formed out here October the 26th out here inside of the NQ, we have had one, two, only two, two bar consecutive closes. Yesterday was bar number one. Today, we already started in our analysis of the market, noticing that the spot volatility was trading above yesterday's high. If that condition remains, we're likely to see a lower close in the future. Certainly the S&P 500, but perhaps the NQ2. So is it a multi-day pullback? Well, here's one thing we can say, John. It's going to likely be at least a two-day pullback, just like we've had coming off of that low. Now, we know that there's typically a two to four bar knee jerk reaction low when we have those consecutive moves. If we get beyond four, that typically tells us about some type of change in trend out there. So is it a multi-day pullback? That piece, I don't know. For that piece, what we have to do is go take a look at what's going on intraday and take a look at because who's going to answer that is Mr. and Mrs. Chart. They're going to tell us that because we're going to identify levels of support. 
And if those levels of support are broken, tells us that we likely head to the next area out there. So now we take a look at the charts here for the NQ. We're going to see, now put up the daily time frame chart. We're going to see a new profile is attempting to form. Looks pretty solid at this stage of the game, but we won't have confirmation on this until Tuesday. But right now, your resistance level here, John, is 17,165. Your support area is at 16,839. Here's what we know right now. Prices below that green oscillator and change line. That tells us that the NQ, at least as of 11.11, has lost momentum. If that condition remains, it's still that second bar to the downside. That could be it. But if it's not, what you want to be watching is 16,961. That's a potential level of support. That's where both buyers and sellers believe that the NQ is fairly priced between the 16,839 and 17,165 areas out there. If price were to close below 16,961, odds would favor a pullback to 16,839. Now, if that happens all at one time, then a two-day pullback and price gets back to support, then I'd say, well, maybe it's not a multi-day pullback. But here, it's open to that taking place. Now, what we're looking for, what we would really love to see, is some type of bearish reversal candle. We don't have that in the daily NQ. That's not going to unfold today. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rosman indicator top. We look at the five-hour time frame chart, we can see that right now price is testing a breakout level. That's at 17,003. If we open up the NQ's chart, the five-hour time frame chart, we can see that if, in fact, price closes. Now, this bar that we're currently in does not complete until 2 p.m. today. So it's only 11.12. But if at 2 p.m., price is below 17.0375, that's its CD9 count breakout level, then odds would favor price is going to make its way to its next breakout area. This is the five-hour time frame chart that we're looking at, and that's done at 16,756.75. We can see there was a big old Nike swoosh. Again, it's a five-hour time frame chart that uh, formed between 2 and 5 p.m. That was back on December 20th. But what took place there? Price found support. It's possible that price will find support at 17,003 today. That's a number that you most certainly want to be able to take a look at out there. So that's an area to watch. What happens if price gets below that? Well, one area that we talked about is 16,756 as a possible price target area. Now, we're going to have the Apogee lunar phase comes in on January 1st. The markets are closed on January 1st. So you're either going to use the close of today or the open of um, of uh, late Monday evening out there for your data points for Apogee and Perigee. What's Stevie talking about? Well, that's a great question. What I'm talking about here is really this set of charts. So we identify the Apogee and Perigee pivot points. It's a very specific point in time. And when the markets are trading during that point in time, you identify that exact price level. Here, we don't have that. Just like the last Perigee lunar phase, that also came in over a weekend. But right now, price is above that. So it's not as if we've gotten some type of major sell signal yet inside of the NQ. But that being said, we do have the new lunar phase that arrives, as I mentioned, uh, it arrives tomorrow. I believe it's tomorrow afternoon. In fact, I know exactly what time it is. I mean, because I look at the clock right now, it says 1114 a.m. Now, I was just going to look to see when is the exact time that it arrives here. Not that that matters, but it will be at um, 1032 in the morning. And that, you know, it's Monday. It's 1032 in the morning on Monday. That's when the Apogee lunar phase arrives. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. Let's go look at the other three equity future contracts, the new profiles that are out there, and the key levels for us to watch. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So now we're taking a look at the four daily equity future contracts out here. Three of the four are attempting to form new profiles. Now I've got different profiles for the two different trading systems that I have. The exception being, no, it's really not the exception any longer. So I've got uh, three different uh, sets of uh, new profiles that are attempting to form. Let's take a look at the ES Mini and look at these black background charts. Now the very first thing that you should take notice of is that this profile has formed above the prior profile. What I mean is that the low is above the prior low, the high is above the prior high. That's a bullish message out here. Now, that will remain bullish as long as price does not close below the bottom of that profile. Again, I want to have confidence. This profile could fall apart. It's already done it a few times. I could stick. It could be the profile I'm looking at on the white background screen. We're going to take a look at it all. But again, we won't have confirmation until Monday evening when uh, the equity futures uh, open up again. But right now, we know that we've got support, potential support at 47.92 and resistance at 48.41. I've got it already drawn up here inside of the NQ uh, where I have prior tops, TD9 count top that was followed by a Rhodesman Dominicator top. And then price all it did was it pulled back to test support. Price has got to close below support preferably for two consecutive days, to then signal to you and I that we've got a real change in trend out there. And then we look for other support levels. You can see in the NQ on the black background chart, its profile levels are 17,165 and 16,880. Again, this profile formed above the prior profile out there. That is a bullish message. That says to me, even if we do have a multi-day pullback, odds favor that price will find support there and then we'll rally into the profile highs again you can't bust them down you try to bust them to the upside and then maybe at towards the end of the week 
is when we get that topping pattern. However, Stevie will change his view on that if we get closes below the bottom of these daily profiles. Why? If you just take a look at it, even inside the Dow Equity Future contract we're just getting to, as John in the Tiger's Den has pointed out, we've got a, a confirmed wave number seven top. Let me make sure of that before I say that. Uh, no, not in the Dow Equity Future contract, we don't. No. Maybe we have in the Dow, but we do not have that in the Dow Equity Future contract. The only thing that we've got inside, well, you'll see that when we go ahead and change screens out here. But speaking of the Dow Equity Future contract, it too has a new profile that's attempting to form. The resistance out here is up at the 38.089 level, and support is down at 37.599. Now, the Russell 2000 formed its new profile yesterday, and the top should hold. Price is trading right now below that, four points below that. The top is at 20.58. We're trading at 20.54 right now. So watch that. If price does close below 20.58, then odds favor, we'll see price move back to the 2029-ish area, 2009, out there. Uh, those would be support areas. Now let's go flip over. Now, today could also be a sell the D point candle formation. This would be a four river evening star pattern. We don't have bearish reversal candles in the other equity future contracts, at least not as of yet. Now let's switch over. Take a look at those white background screens as all. There you're going to see a few different numbers when it comes to profiles. We use them all. We use all the data we can get. So here in the ES mini, support is down at 47.82. You may recall on the black background charts, it was 47.92. So which one are we going to use? We're going to use both, but 47.82 at this stage here is the one that the ES mini must close below for two consecutive sessions to indicate a change in trend. In the NQ, 16839 is what shows as profile support on the white background screen. It was 16880 on the black background screen. So use both of those levels. Again, two consecutive close below 16839. That's going to suggest we head back to the 15994 level. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, you'll see there is no wave seven pattern that has formed out here. We're only in probably A. Maybe an E, but probably just the uh, first leg to the upside. Nonetheless, it's got profile resistance at 38.089. That matches. And the support at 37,599. Well, on this chart, it's 37,530. So it would have to be a close below 37,530. That would give us that train change in trend message. And inside the Russell 2000, it's at that 2009.90 level out there. You need to see two consecutive closes below that. So that's what I have. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts, the new profiles out there, where we're at with regard to topping signals. And let's not just stop here. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside the cash indices, because each of the cash indices, or most of them, have roads momentum indicator tops. So to start with that, let's take a look at our daily. Let me see where I'm at on my screen. Yeah, okay, we're okay. So we've got the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. I'm the uh, top portion of this screen is the Dow. The bottom portion is the S&P 500. Here, with regard to the daily cash indice, you can see that wave number seven that will get confirmed today if price does not close above yesterday's high. Again, this also needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a road momentum indicator top. That being said, we have a TD9 count top that is going to confirm today for the weekly time frame. That pattern will complete next Friday. The monthly time frame does not have a top. It's trading it's trade basically near its all-time highs out there. Uh, that still remains uh, bullish. When we take a look at the S&P 500, we'll see the S&P 500 is trading below that green oscillator and change line, telling us it's lost its momentum. But it still doesn't have that bearish reversal candle. So we revert back to the ES mini, and we revert back to those profile levels. Again, we had two different profile levels. One was 47.92. The other was 47.82. But that's not on the S&P cash. That is on the ES mini. Any contract. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame is going to confirm a TD9 count top this week. It completes that pattern next week. Its monthly time frame chart still remains bullish because price is above uh, its green oscillator and change line. Let's go ahead and switch panels. Let's go to our other two primary indices out there. Those being me a second here. The uh, Dow, uh, not the Dow, but the uh, NASDAQ and the SOX, the semis out there. So let's go take a look at those. Gosh, I hope I'm on the right page. It's so hard to see. Let me see if I blow this up. And I figure that out. Where did that go? No, I can't even see that. Uh, somebody in the den. Does it say the NDX 100 up at the upper left? I sure hope it does. 
If not, then I'll go to the next uh, chart out there. Just a little quick request out there. If somebody could just confirm. Are we looking at the uh, at NASDAQ and the semis out there? I'll, I'm going to act as if we are. And if not, let me see. We got a couple people typing. Just want to make sure that that's what we've got. Otherwise, I pulled up the same screen, and you know, I really don't feel like doing that brain fart kind of stuff. Um, okay, uh, NDX is up. Okay, perfect. All right. So in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the NDX. Now the NDX has a wave seven top. Uh, the NQ, I don't, I can't recall if the NQ did, but the wave, uh, as long as price is not closed above yesterday's high. Here in the NDX 100, we can see that price has lost its momentum, it's traded below the green oscillator and change line. If we take a look at where its price target would be, now we can't go to that because we're going to go to the NQ support levels first. And again, that's in that 16,880. I don't remember what the second one was. But if those support levels fail, and we do get a change in trend signal. Then that sells that says says to us the NDX 100 should go target the 15875 level. In the case of the weekly time frame, you, this could generate both a Rhodes momentum indicator top as well as a TD. Now the TD nine count top is going to confirm out here today. It'll complete next week. But if we get that bearish shooting star candle, boy, that's got to say something to think about out there. But we won't know until the end of the day. The monthly chart still bullish. It's trading above prior swing points out there. Uh, it is uh, that we take a look at the semis. The semis do not have any kind of topping pattern. But right now it has lost its momentum. And price is trading below that 4182 level. Turns out the weekly chart is going to confirm a bar number eight. But today, at the end of the Taze trading session, it could be a bear shooting star. That would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator topping pattern. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. And dot com.
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So what I put up on my screen during that break here is the uh, weekly time frame chart for the uh, NASDAQ 100. You can, if you look up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the instrument. This is live right now. This is the weekly time frame. And the reason I put this up here is because at day's end, we could get a bearish shooting star candle. That's what we've got at the moment. Don't know what it's going to look like at 4 p.m. But if we do, on a weekly basis, get a bearish shooting star candle, that's going to confirm a road's momentum indicator top. Now, when the pattern begins, you start seeing these black lines being drawn. That itself is not a sell signal. These are, we're looking at the ones to the upside. The ones to the downside, the same thing. It wouldn't be a buy signal. The confirmation of that comes with the bullish or bearish reversal candle so you can see here if we take a look at this trading day when this pattern actual the pattern actually began uh, the week of July 21st and then we got the bearish reversal candle on August the 4th that led to an A to B equals CD to the downside that created that uh, Gartley buy pattern when that bull sash candle came in on November the 3rd the week of November 3rd here, if we take a look at some additional signals were triggered, here's a signal that was triggered back on November 24th. Here's one on December 1st. Those were not sell signals. Those were not bearish reversal candles. Price will continue or it should continue to move higher until that shows up. If you take a look at this high that formed out here, this is back in 2021. This is November 26th of uh, 2021 on a weekly basis. That was a bearish engulfing candle. That confirmed the road's momentum indicator top. This is one of the reasons to be paying so close attention to all of these patterns out here, whether it's the weekly or whether it's the daily out there. So we won't know until the end of the day, but certainly when we're back together on Tuesday, we can re-look at that. So let's do this here. Let's actually go take a look at a couple of requests. I don't want to get behind on that. We're really not that far behind at this stage of the game, but I just want to get to uh, those. And um, so I'm going to change this so I don't screw up here. Uh, I have a way of being able to do this, I think, to make sure I'm on the right screen. We're going to take a look at XPEV, and that will pop up momentarily. Just give me a moment to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go, number three. Okay, so we take a look at XPEV. The question was, can this break out to 15? And the answer that I would have to say is absolutely. Why is that? Well, this confirmed a buy the D point pattern yesterday. Let's go take a look at that. Here's your A to B line that we're going to draw in. I'm just going to go ahead and copy, and I'm not even going to copy, I'm just going to move that line over. So here we go. You can see that we got down, this got down to the one to one level. You wait for the bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern that took place yesterday. That was a bull a separation uh, candle out there. We're trading inside a bullish structured profile. When you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, that's currently at 1444. We're trading at 1470. That would suggest that price should then be able to get up to tag the top of that profile. Turns out that's 1523. So the question was, can it get to 15? Uh, Stevie's got to go with the technical answer is absolutely. That's what the chart patterns are telling us. Now, on a weekly basis, you just have a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside his profile. Its next level of resistance is at 15.23 as well. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. So, yeah, I'd say 15.23 is in the cards for you. If we take a look at a short-term time frame chart, the monthly chart's not helping us much, so we'll just move on. If we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, what do we have? We don't have anything just yet. It's got a road's momentum indicator signal. Well, all we have is a bunch of inside bars. Uh, so that's not giving us any kind of a uh, topping uh, pattern or anything along those lines. What else can we take a look at? Well, this is going to be or appears that it'll be number day, number day. The second, the second consecutive higher close out there. So if this is only a counter trend move out there. Then we're likely to see a top form either today or on Tuesday out here for XPEV. We can see that uh, the rallies that have been coming since this thing topped on November 24th, there was one rally, it was a three-bar rally, so maybe that's what you get as well out here. Uh, but it does look like it wants to go tackle that $15 area out there. So, And unfortunately, the individual who sends these in, it's coming from uh, a cell phone. It never tells me who it is, which, which I would really like to know who is it that's sending in the email. So maybe you can do that next time you're requesting XPEV. Let's move on to our next request. It is from Zip inside the Tiger's Den. And Zip wants to take a look at Boeing. BA is a ticker symbol out there. So let's go see what Boeing is doing. 
We just have to get over to its charts. And it's right now, as I take a look at Boeing, it has a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top formed on December 20th. Price right now is trading with inside its profile. So your support zone for Boeing is down at 252.44. The area where both buyers and sellers believe this stock is fairly valued is right at the 259.28 level. We're trading at 259.79. And resistance where the sellers reside, that's up at 266.13. So Boeing has a TD9 count top. I would say if Boeing were to close below the center of its profile at 259.28, that might open up the floodgates to get down to 252.44. You're going to get a confirmed TD9 count top on the weekly time frame that says pay close attention. Why? Because, Zip, if price closed below 252.44, the daily says 230, the weekly says 234.09 which basically is price would begin moving lower, that'll start moving down. And so 230 would be the likely target to the downside for Boeing. That's what the daily and the monthly charts are telling us. The weekly chart, the weekly chart, the daily and the weekly chart. The monthly chart shows us that price is going to close inside its swing point for March of 2021. That swing point did volume of 518 million shares. We're not even going to do 125 million shares uh, today. Right now we're at 117. So it's going into a swing point with really light volume out there. Nonetheless, you're still inside that swing point. But I would be taking my P's and Q's from the daily and the weekly time frame. Now, remember, at a TD9 count pattern, that's going to confirm this week. Zip, it doesn't complete until next week out there. But watch the daily. You've got the setup there. You've got also a wave number seven pattern that I see. You've got a TD9 count. You've got a consolidation with inside the profile. Maybe that's all that it's going to do. But if it does break that 252.44 level, I would have to say, look out below. Hector and Patty want to take a look at the IWM. So let's just put, I don't think I was able to insert those charts. So let's go ahead and populate those here. And the question was really just a, an overview, I believe, because he's saying uh, December 13th, the uh, price broke through a, a downtrend, which began many moons ago. Price projections uh, based on our toolbox. So here what we can see is that it, when we take a look at the IWM, Hector, let me open up the daily time frame chart. Everybody will see this clearly. Since we've come off the bottom out here, the bottom that formed really was confirmed on October 31st. That confirmed the Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. We can see that all pullbacks and retracements have found support of their green oscillator and change line. Now, I don't know what it looks like at the end of the day, Hector and Patty, but right now we're trading below it, it being 202.18. If price closed above it again, boy, it would still be on its merry way merry way to higher highs. What happens if price closes below it? Well, you have a new profile that is forming inside of the IWM. I just want to check something out on my other screen out here. And uh, yeah, it's got that same profile. So that profile actually formed yesterday. Okay, great. So that profile formed yesterday. So your resistance level is at 203.62. Your buy zone is between 197.09 at 198.03. I would say a close below the screen oscillator and change line, Hector, you were asking for price projection levels. That would first be 197.09 to 198.03. That's what the IWM is communicating to us. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're analyzing the charts of the IW and the small caps out here. We're doing this for Hector and Patty. And uh, so the other thing that I've noticed here, Hector, is, yeah, I mean, I, I understand the breakout and the trends and all that so forth. Uh, and, and actually, we were discussing this morning by email um, a question about volume. And so I'm going to go to that question about volume because this is an area where I would use volume versus the other things that we were talking about. So here, uh, the IWM has a weekly swing point from April 1st, April Fool's Day, back in 2022 out there. That swing point has volume of 127 million shares. Right now for the week, we're at 106. Now, it seems to me like price is pushing into that swing point with volume. Uh, because we had a shortened trading week. On, on average, I think we do about 14 million shares. No, 40, 35, 40 million shares a day out there. So the question is, is it pushing to that swing point with volume? If we if we just looked at volume and we didn't figure out whether it's a holiday or anything, what I would say to you is a close below that swing low, and that's at 20303, that would signal, and you do it with lighter volume, less than 127 million shares, which we're very likely to do, that's a test rejection of that swing point. Can't bust them up, you try to bust them the downside, that takes us back to that daily time frame set of charts out there and really suggests getting back to the 197 to 198 area. If, on the other hand, this is really a test of a swing point with volume, then what that tells us is price should be back up there. Now, when I say back up there, that means at least a low of the swing point, and that's a low of that April 1st of 2022. That's at 20303. So that's about the best that I can do for you on the IWM. The last piece of this uh, puzzle that we can take a look at here, much like the other U.S. indices, is this is likely to be day number two of consecutive moves lower. We can see that coming off the bottom here, we did have one four consecutive day pullback. The other two were two day pullbacks out there. So you want to keep an eye on that as well out there, Hector and Patty. And thanks much for writing in. And again, Happy New Year to uh, both of you. Uh, let's go on to our next question. This one is coming in from Nicholas. This is by email. Nicholas wants to take a look at Visa. B is the ticker symbol here. And we take a look at Visa. What we can see is what? Let me open up the daily time frame chart. We just get my head wrapped around this. So A, B, C, D, E, F. So you do have a wave number seven top that qualifies as far as Stevie is concerned out there. So you've got that top in place. That took place on December 14th. What transpired after that was price trading with inside its profile, find support at the bottom of that profile at 254.48. 
the actual low of that trading session, that was a trading session from December 15th, was 254.45. How does that work, those profiles? They're beautiful things, aren't they? Don't you feel like we're cheating? No, we're not cheating. We're just using information that's available to us out there to help assist us in what the market is communicating. We'll get the visa already, Stevie. Well, Visa is trained above the top of its profile. That's a bullish signal. Still has that topping pattern out there. It's running into resistance at that green oscillator and change line. We're going to give the daily time frame an overall neutral signal right now. But if price closed back below 259.35, then we'd have to go with price is going to pull back the test of 254 to 256 level. That's its bullish structured daily profile. On a weekly time frame, we do not have any kind of top that I see out here. I see an A to B equals CD pattern, but I don't see a bearish reversal candle out there. I don't see a TD9 count top. I don't see a sell the D point top. I don't see a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. So the weekly for Visa says, you know what? When you're done doing whatever you're doing on the daily time frame, please finish up and give me a call because I'm ready to move to higher price. Turns out the monthly chart is telling us the same thing. Price is going to appear as close above a prior resistance level from July of 2021. And today it closed above 252.67, negates that signal, and says that price wants to move higher. So at this stage of the game, the weekly and the monthly are both saying that Visa wants to move higher. Now, on the weekly time frame out here, um, Nicholas, is a close above the high from two weeks ago would then trigger a TD9 count top. But that high is from December 15th, and it was at 263.25. So that's what you'd be looking at for next week out there. We don't have any signal to suggest that that's what's going to happen. If price got above that green oscillator and change line, well, that would be your first signal that that is what's likely going to unfold. Let's go take a look at the UNG for Joe. Joe would like to get in on natural gas. Let's go see what the UNG charts are doing out here. And the UNG's got a nice, uh, on a daily basis, TD9 count bottom. On a weekly basis, a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. On a monthly basis, not much. So what do we have out here? We have price trading above inside of the UNG, above the top of its profile out there. And that suggests that price could run up to 560. Of course, Joe's asking the question, looking to go long natural gas. He wanted to use boil, okay, not UNG, for a day trade. A day trade. I'm going to say today's not the day to be doing day trading. It's 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 too light of volume. Things can get pushed around. I, but but you asked about a day trade. So what we have to do here is actually go to the natural gas charts. If day trade, we got to start getting pretty granular. So let me pull up the natural gas charts. Give me a moment. I just have to get to the right spot. Natural gas and G G G. Where is G? I know where it is. Okay. So now we'll pull up the uh, natural gas charts and what we're going to look at. And for day trading out here, I don't know what the time frame it is you're even looking at, uh, Joe. So I probably need to know that so that I can provide you with some better information. But in the meantime, let's just see what populates out here. Now, the upper right hand chart for natural gas is going to be the 30 minute time frame chart. And what is this showing us? I'm going to open this up. Did we see some kind of bottoming pattern as price was moving lower earlier? The answer is not that I see. Yeah, not that I see out here, although I guess it could have been an A to B equals C. Let me just check on this. We'll draw in the A to B point, and then we'll come take a look at this from the C point perspective. So let's pull this over here, pull this like that. And, yeah, it did complete a buy the D point pattern. And now price is trading above the top of its profile. But I don't have any indication that it's going to be able to get above the highs from yesterday that came in at 3 o'clock. This is uh, natural gas that we're looking at. That's at the 257 level. And you want to take a long position out there. So uh, you were so close to that high, I'd have to say. I, so I don't have the signal on a 30-minute basis for you to do that. Um, but you obviously do what you want to do. Uh, Let me go down to a 10-minute chart. Let's pull over a 10-minute chart. Let's just cycle. Uh, let's just uh, try to rifle through some of these out here. So on a 10-minute chart, I've actually got a sell the D point pattern that formed out here at 1140. It's 11.49 right now. That should take price back to its green oscillator and change on a 253 out there. It's gotten pretty close to it, but that's the only pattern I see for it. If I look at a five-minute time frame chart here, and I'm not going to spend too much more time. Well, I don't have any other requests, but I'll, I'll still look around and see if I've got anything. Um, here on a five-minute chart, 
Yeah, not much, not much here either. So my suggestion uh, to you, Joe, is take the year off. Don't trade today. Don't do, do an interday trade on natural gas. Now, natural gas is definitely a place to look. What do you mean it's a place to look? Let's go take a look at natural gas and seasonal pattern out here. Now, that's important for you to take a look at and understand what its seasonal is. So now we pull up natural gas. This will populate. We'll get to the maximum number of years that we've got. That's 32 years. Ah, oh, this is not. I forgot. There's something wrong with the, with uh, with their natural gas futures contract. But UNG is okay. So we'll pull that up here. I need to write to them and let them know that there's some type of problem. But now we take a look at the UNG. Here we can see that typically, Joe, the UNG or natural gas doesn't bottom until the early part of February. So we're still in an unfavorable seasonal time frame for natural gas. But that would be a reason to day trade it. But don't do it today. Come back and take a look at it on Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. See Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Welcome back, folks. That Dow's down 137, SP off 24, NASDAQ 115, Russell's down 26. We're taking a look at Fortinet. FTNT is a Turkish symbol out here. Now you can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Um, it doesn't uh, has not completed that, so that still may be in play out here. Why may that, that be in play? Because price is still trading above the top of its daily profile and its green oscillator and change line. So at this stage here, we've just got some type of retracement, not because of a top that I see. The area of support that you'd be watching, the first area for Fortinet would be at 
54. The second area would be at 57.79. The third area would be 57.43. If there's only a counter trend move to the downside, Duncan, that's where price should find support between 57.43 and 58.24. The weekly chart says Fortinet wants to go target 61.39. The weekly the monthly chart says price wants to go target 65.84 to 67.10. So that's what the charts are telling you. I hope that that helps you out with regard to that. I don't see anything else on my screens that would assist you with anything uh the next question that came in is from where did that go uh rye rye says what are your thoughts on how window dressing plays here you know i have not really done a great study on that rye to be able to answer that question uh with any kind of conviction instead you know i really just kind of take a look at patterns so window dressing or not i don't think that's a tool on here we should probably ask them uh, or maybe it is. But here we we'll take a look at the S&P 500. We we'll take a look at just the regular seasonal patterns out here. This shows that we're in the favorable seasonal pattern, that the top typically comes in on average. That's over a 95-year period of time, right around January the uh, 6th out there. So that would be next week sometime. So maybe we're getting that early. That's always a possibility out there. Real quickly on the events. Let me see if I've got um, seasonality. Sorry about that. What do I have? Got turn of the month. Uh, first day of December. No, we don't want that. First day of the month. Middle of the month. Where's the last day of the month? I don't see anything here, but I'll look at that, Rye, uh, over the holiday weekend. I do want to wish each of you a very happy, a very healthy, a very prosperous, and a very safe new year. Thanks so much for joining us here in 2023. We'll make 2024 an even better year. Again, thanks for tuning in and be safe out there. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Take care.